Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, talking about being changed from Melchizedek to Aaron, and from Aaron back to Jesus under the order of Melchizedek, there is of necessity a change made also in the law. This verse is packed. We've got Melchizedek, who is an eternal character in the scriptures. It says very clear that Melchizedek has neither beginning of days nor end of life. He has neither father nor mother. He is an eternal being like an angel of God. He existed before creation. He exists now and he will exist after the end has come. Therefore, his priesthood is forever. Now, Aaron came as a temporary, as it were, an interface to the priesthood. And now we have Jesus, Yeshua, who is also an interface. He entered in to priesthood. And now he is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Then this verse comes along and says, when there's a change in the priesthood, there's also a change in the law. The word change here in the original Greek manuscripts means to transfer. So we have Melchizedek as a priest in the days of Abraham. Then we have Aaron as a priest. Now we have Yeshua as our priest. It was like transferred. The job was transferred. The same job. Okay, and it's the same priesthood, at least the same order of priesthood. But there was a job transfer. There was a transfer of authority, a transfer of priesthood. In the same way, there's the transfer of the law. So the law was transferred from Melchizedek, the priest of God, to the Levitical priesthood. From the Levitical priesthood to Yeshua. It's the same priesthood. Melchizedek, Aaron, Jesus. The same priesthood, just different person. So it has changed, but not the contents of it. Let me explain. Before the Levitical priesthood was put in place, we still had all of the tenets of the Torah. We had the definition of unclean from clean animals in the days of Noah. We have the sacrificial laws. We have the moral laws, as we know, was violated in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, and with Cain for that matter. So the law in itself, the content of the law, is the same. It was just transferred from one to another. The same law that the Levites had is the same law that Adam and Eve and Abel had, Cain had. That's why Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's wasn't. Abel sacrificed according to the Torah, right in specification to the law as brought down through Moses. Cain didn't. He didn't bring the first fruits. God got angry with Cain for murdering Abel because he transgressed the law, the same law that Moses brought down. Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed through the wrath of God by transgressing the same law as brought to us through the holy man of God, Moses. So don't get confused. The eternal word of God, the eternal Torah has not changed, never will. Why? Because God doesn't change. The Torah is a reflection of God. Any law is a reflection of the lawgiver. If God changes, then the Torah changes. It's impossible for the Torah to change if God doesn't change. It's possible to transfer it around to different people, through different mediums. And the book of Hebrews here, in context, makes it very clear that the priesthood through Melchizedek is there forever because Melchizedek is there forever. So don't be deceived. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it, which means obey it. Jesus didn't die to make us lawless. He died to give us the power to be lawful, the power over sin. And it's my prayer that each one of you would experience that breakthrough in your life. The power of God breaking sin in your life.
As always, seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.